Hey guys! Today I want to talk about what I am going to just label stationery and craft supplies minimalism. And the reason for this video is because now that I've unpacked everything and it's been a good two years since I've had all of my supplies and just everything in the same place since, you know, two years ago or more, I am now taking an inventory of what, after I've pared down, of what I've actually got still. And I'm coming across a certain amount of things that I just have way too much of. And I, I don't want to say this is a no spend because that's not it. It's going to be more of a low spend um, or spending less on certain things and I'm going to get into my actual list of what I have as craft or stationary allowances but I wanted to show you a few examples of the things I came across that I am going to strive to not really purchase because I want to really use up the things that I have not have it sitting around on a bookshelf or on my desk I don't I basically don't want to hoard craft supplies. I did that for a long time and I wasn't using my uh, supplies. And in paring down and in having used less in the past year, I have actually found myself being more creative, reaching for my supplies a lot more, and discovering that I really like creating a lot of my own things. Like I like using my watercolors to paint. I like, I'm getting back into sketching with different mediums. And so I, I think I like being able to challenge myself and trying to make more things instead of having to depend on supplies all the time, if that makes sense. So one example of some supplies that I've come across are, I've got a lot of the six by six um, scrapbook pads. I got rid of a lot. Um, I got rid of all the 12 by 12 size papers basically, but I do have some of the six by six in holiday themed things. And so I've kept those. And then I've also come across my flow book for paper lovers book that has more than 300 pages of paper goodies. I think they come out with the actual limp, um, special edition books at least twice a year. I want to say once in summer and then once in winter. And one is definitely more than enough because what's in here are postcards, pattern paper, wrapping paper, there's tags, as you can see, there's stickers. There's just all sorts. You can color in certain pages and cut them out. There are some that you can just cut out the existing images of. Um, those are like sticker labels. There is so much to, to take away from this that in this itself, I could use a lot of this in my journals. And now that I've got it back with me, I can definitely reach for this if I'm feeling kind of a journaling rut and that will hopefully keep me from wanting to buy lots of pretty papers and things like that. So that is one example. Another example, and this is not necessarily craft related, but it's stationary related, is sticky notes and sticky flags. This is a huge birch box. I got it from my husband who had used to subscribe to the subscription this is filled with sticky notes I've got them in every size and style I've got these are like Andy Warhol sticky notes tons of sticky flags I can't even tell you how many I have of different styles I've got small notepads for note-taking it just keeps going on and on all the way to the bottom. This is filled. Now I am an IT person so not a lot of my job requires 
things to be written down longhand. And when I am in a hurry, on the go, I do have a tendency to pull out my phone and just make notes there. So I'm not always reaching out for sticky notes. I do use a lot of sticky flags on a regular basis for bookmarking books, cookbooks, things like that. But um, this will last me years. I mean, I've had a lot of these for years that I've never finished. So sticky notes and sticky flags are definitely something that I really want to avoid purchasing. I've even stopped looking at them when I visit Etsy shops or different stationary online stores. I just don't even bother looking at them. This is definitely more than enough for me to use up. So that's another area that I found that I really don't need more of. The next thing is washi tape. Now we all know we love washi tape. It's an easy way to decorate pages and pen pal letters and such. When I first got into washi tape, I was huge on it. I was just buying it left and right. I really wasn't paying attention to necessarily the quality of it. I was just, whatever washi tape there was, I was buying. And now that I've pared it down to just whatever can fit into this pop sugar box at the moment, that's just how I've got it stored. Um, this is still a lot for me. This whole box is filled. So that's definitely something I am going to buy less of. And I've been pretty good. I've not really purchased too many washi tapes in a while. I've definitely been more picky about it lately, picking only the ones that I know I'm going to use a lot. There were so many that in looking back, they were just too colorful or too cutesy that I, it just wasn't my style. And now I'm going to be a lot pickier with what I buy. Whatever isn't in here is actually sitting on my desk in a little organizer and those are my absolute favorites. I eventually want to get down to whatever can fit into that organizer on my desk. I want to have a small collection of washi that I love, that I can use in my journal, and for me I just really want to pay attention to the quality because there's definitely a you get what you pay for in washi tape. Not all washi is created equal. I'm not saying that I'm going to go out there and just buy the most expensive kind, but um, I'm definitely willing to spend a little bit more money on washi tape that sticks well um, on my journal pages rather than ones that kind of fall off. Or I've had ones, like here's an example. These, these are the scotch rolls. Some of these are not that great because when you start pulling on it, the adhesive actually starts sticking to the underside of what it's sticking to. Does that make sense? Like if I pull this off, some of that stickiness ends up right here on the surface and maybe it's peeling it off so that way this part doesn't, it's not as sticky. So because of that, I just feel like I want to focus on quality. Um, another two things, these I'm going to buy less of, I'm not going to say I'm not going to buy any, are going to be die cuts and sticker flakes. I've got all of my sticker flakes in one little tin so that way I have them all in one place. I really don't mind just kind of going through it to find what I want, but this way I can see them. I know that they're all in one place so it's easy for me to pull out when I journal. These, because they take up less space, I'm not too worried about getting, I mean, you can always, there's always a point where it's too much, but I mean, I've got room to grow, so if I do want to buy a few more packs, that's no big deal. Same for die cuts. This is my box that I keep all my die cuts and ephemera in, and right now it's looking a little full because I did throw in some random things that don't necessarily belong in here, but um, when it kind of gets to the halfway point here, I will usually go out and buy um, some new ones to kind of replenish it and revamp my, my die cut and ephemera set. And I've kind of gotten to that point. I've actually got some ephemera coming my way in a Studio Calico purchase. Um, so I think I should be getting that in the next few days. 
And then after that, I think I'm going to be okay. I think the only exception would be Christmas coming up. I love Christmas. It's my favorite time of year. It's my favorite holiday. So I will make an exception for certain types of ephemera. But that this, when it's filled, is just, there's a lot of different things that I can get creative with. And I really like that. So I do like to have this box full of material. Okay, so we've gone through the different examples of things that I've run into that I have a little too much of. And this is all in my opinion and it's my comfort level. If you like to have a room full of supplies, that's totally your prerogative. And hey, good for you. That's totally cool. I used to have a whole room dedicated to crafts and I personally just found that I wasn't really scrapbooking or journaling with any of it because maybe it just got a little too overwhelming for me. And so now I'm kind of getting into a really great comfort level of loving and using my supplies. Anyway, um, getting back to my allowances that I mentioned earlier, I did go ahead and make a list of all the things that I, that are kind of on my wish list. You know, everybody's got a craft supplies wish list. Um, things that you've thought about purchasing and you're not sure if you want to buy. Well, I've gone ahead and made a small list of things that I do want to get. And then I've got a larger wish list. So these are more like larger items that might be a little bit pricier that I am in no hurry to get. And maybe I can put that in as like Christmas wish list items for my husband or family. But the top portion is going to be all my allowances for things that I want to get that I might actually need. Um, so going over it, I've got a hole punch. I donated that when I moved, so I would like to get a simple just hand hole punch for maybe uh, junk journals or just various um, craft supplies reasons. Sticky dots and adhesive replacements, I use those all the time, so I feel like refills of things that you use all the time are okay. I do want to get the Traveler's Notebooks, like the Midori Traveler's Notebook stamps. Um, I put one as like an allowance, because I don't want to go crazy this year. But... Um, Keep in mind that whatever I have on this top portion of the list is not necessarily things that I will get and I'm going to get everything. These are just kind of ideas and more of like a guideline to follow. I want to get more 013 insert refills. Those are my inserts of choice. So obviously as I'm using them, I want to replace them. I did reserve a bare stamp set from paper plus cloth. They never got back to me, so I'm actually going to email them because they did say they reserved one, and I don't know if they ever got it back in stock, but I did make an allowance for that. I want to get maybe a bottle of the J. Herbin? Herbine? I don't know how to pronounce it. Bottled ink in a dark like green color. I think that would be really fun to play with our dark purple. Um, field notes leather cover. I don't actually have a cover for my field notes notebooks and I would like that because I would definitely like to carry that around. A leather pen roll. I've started budgeting for that because I know that those can get expensive and preferably I want to get that American made so if I can support a local area that would be great but in being American made it does tend to be a little bit more expensive. So I do have that as part of my wish list for this year. I do have a few woodland creature stamps um, from this like Pippa Zuka site. I can't remember the shop, but I follow them on Instagram and they have some really cute woodland creature stamps. I've had my eye on those for the past year and I'm hopefully going to pick up a few um, soon. There are a few rolls of vintage washi from Bomb Kuchin that I want to get, and the only reason why I haven't gotten them already is because they're always sold out, so I've kind of been eyeing their shop once in a while, and if I can find them in stock, I'm going to order some. 
replacement ink pads for stamping. So a black ink pad and a brown ink pad. Those are the two colors that I use the most. Refills for my Instax film um, for my camera. And then I do have a Paper Geek Company. I think that's the Etsy shops. Um, like a, a few items in my cart. So I will put that order in um, in the future. So those are my allowances for this year. And like I said, this bottom portion is more just items that are, I'm in no hurry to get, but kind of are just stationary goals, maybe, of things to own. And so I'm going to end it here, but I wanted to share with you just kind of where I'm at in terms of my supplies and how I'm going to be handling what I've got versus what's coming in and what I'm using. And these I find are some of the things that I do use um, quite a bit are like papers, my sticker flakes, all my ephemera over here. These are things that I use all the time and washi not so much lately. And maybe that's another reason why I'm not um, into buying that um, as often anymore. Because, you know, sometimes our creativity, it changes, it shifts with our moods. So that's where I'm at. I would love to know if you guys have yourself tried to go through your inventory and find things that you are just not needing to buy and that you want to maybe rein in and focus your money more on all the things that you use a lot more. So I, I'd be curious to know because so far this kind of structure in my budget has really helped me focus what my needs are and what I like to use the most. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.